I received a question about how to control the dimensions and parameters for a cosmetic thread as a function of the model geometry. For example, let's say that I want to control the major diameter so that if this whole diameter ever changes, the major diameter automatically updates. Also, let's say I want to control the depth of the thread as a function of the part length to make sure that the thread depth is never inappropriate. For example, the thread depth is longer than the depth of the part itself. So to do that, I'm going to use relations in the model. And I have a couple of 3D notes in here just to show you what these different features are. If I click on and go to the text editor, these notes were created just by using the parameter from the cosmetic thread, followed by a colon and then FID and the underscore followed by the feature ID. So FID is short for feature ID. If you want to figure out the feature ID for the different features, you can go to the parameters dialog box. And I'm going to change the look in drop down list to feature and then pick the feature that I'm interested in. So for example, the main whole thread is feature ID 897. So that's how I can use it for generating a note. Similarly, for patterns, patterns have your different dimensions for the number of instances. If I go to a pattern and then go to the edit dimensions icon and switch dimensions, I can see the number of instances for the pattern is controlled by P31 in this case. And that's what I used in the other note. Let's switch dimensions back. And now let's write our relations to control the different thread dimensions and parameters as a function of the model geometry. First off, I'll go to the relations dialog box and I'm going to write my first line as a comment. Forward slash and asterisk means that the rest of this is going to be a comment. So let's write control thread dimensions as a function of model geometry. All right, let's go to a blank line. And the first one that I want to do is, again, controlling that major diameter. So to get to it, I can use the insert selected icon. And I'm going to look in feature. And again, pick that cosmetic thread. And there's the major diameter. I'll choose insert selected. And it pastes it into my editor, major diameter colon FID underscore 897. And I want that to be equal to, I'm going to select the whole feature. And here's the whole diameter, D14. And I always want it to be 10% bigger than the whole diameter. So I'm going to multiply D14 by 1.1. All right, for the next one, for the depth of this feature, D34, I always want that to be 80% of the depth of the hole. The problem I have, though, is that the way I created this part is that I have a base feature, and this has a height, and then I have a truncated cone feature, which is this part over here. So they have separate dimensions for controlling the depth of the feature. And then this hole itself is a through all hole. So I don't have a dimension that corresponds to the length of the part. What I'm going to do is use some functionality from the behavioral modeling extension that PTC put in the base package to perform a measurement and then create that measurement as a feature which contains a parameter for that distance that I'm interested in. So from the measure dropdown list, I'm going to measure a distance and the distance is going to be from this surface. Hold down the control key, select the bottom surface. And right now that is a distance of five. If I click on the feature tab in the measure distance dialog box, we can create a parameter called distance in the feature. You can change the name if you want to, but distance works for me. Then if you go to the save drop down menu, you could make a feature. And I'm just going to change this to be called part length and click the OK button. And so now I've got that feature in my model. Let's close the measure distance dialog box. And I'm going to drag this up above the whole feature that is going to use it. 
All right, so now let's go back to our relations dialog box, tools, relations, and the dimension that I want to control is D34. I happen to see this from here. Uh, let's just write D34, and that's going to be equal to, and let's use insert selected again. I'm going to look in a feature, and I'm going to select that part length feature that I just created. Let's insert selected. And I want the depth to be 80% or 0 0.8 times that measured distance. So that way if I ever change the length of the part, the D34 dimension will automatically update. Let's click the OK button. And so now time to test this out. All right, let's try changing the hole diameter. I'm going to select the hole and then hit modify. And I'm going to change the diameter to a value of two. And we can see immediately that the node is updating. So the diameter, uh, the major diameter of the thread has changed to a value of 2.2. Let's try that one more time. Let's change this to a value of 2.5. And again, this changes to 2.75 automatically. All right, now for changing the length of the part, let's select our truncated cone feature. Oops, got the draft feature. Let's select the truncated cone. I'm gonna hit the modify. And right now this is a height of four. Let's change this to a value of three. And I'm going to use the regenerate command. And we see that now the depth of the hole automatically updated because the measured distance is three. I happen to know that this is a length of one, so that updated. Similarly, we can change, say, the base. Let's change it. And right now, it is a depth of one. Let's say I change this to a value of, oops, having trouble clicking on it. There we go change this to 1.5 and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut oh let's just hit the regenerate button all right so I regenerated and now this depth over here is 3.6 because 3 plus 1.5 is 4.5 4.5 times 0.8 is 3.6 so this updated automatically you'll notice this other one didn't update it still has the same depth so just like before, if I write a relation to control this depth as a function of the base length, then I will have this update the way that I want so that, again, my model behaves parametrically with my design intent. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolwindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.